The search is on for a new Secretary of Health and Human Services after former Georgia Congressman Tom Price was forced to resign late yesterday in a scandal over using expensive private charter flights for official and personal travel. President Trump named Deputy Assistant Secretary Don Wright as acting chief of the massive department and its 80,000 employees. Finding and confirming a permanent successor to Price is only one of the challenges ahead for the administration. Joining us now from the nation's capital is Washington Post reporter John Wagner. John, uh, let's first start by uh, the person who's supposed to take over now. What do we know about him? Well, we know he's a practicing physician, uh, Don Wright, and uh, I don't think there's any expectation that he's going to be in the position very long. Uh, but it was, uh, you know, it was somewhat interesting that they went ahead and appointed someone as soon as they got rid of Price. I think it showed that this had been teed up for uh, a little while. Is the ease of confirmation an issue? I mean, considering uh, what Tom Price went through and now that the spotlight is a, maybe a little sharper? Well, I think the confirmation uh, process for whoever is named permanently uh, it will be interesting on a couple levels. One, I think it becomes a proxy battle over the future of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, Democrats are really not happy with the administration uh, saying that they've done nothing to, you know, from the executive branch perspective to try and shore up what's in place now. So I think wh whoever the nominee may be, they're going to really be pressed on that issue. And then I think you know, one of the lessons learned here uh, on both sides of the aisle is that uh, you need to you know, carefully vet these nominees. Um, the whole issue of prices, uh, uh, trades, and stock, uh, health stocks was an issue uh, when he was going through the confirmation process. And Republicans really gave him a pass on that. And I think a lot of them came to regret it. And it was one reason he didn't have uh, many allies left when he got in hot water again. You know, speaking of the Affordable Care Act, the law of the land, uh, this is still the open enrollment period that's uh, coming up, right? That's right. And that's, uh, you know, another looming question is, you know, to what extent is the administration committed to trying to make this work? Uh, Democrats will tell you they're, they're trying to undermine it at every turn. And I think, you know, that's really going to be a question going forward because it, it doesn't look like there's going to be a, a health care overhaul bill anytime soon. You know, one of the stories that I read yesterday about uh, the, the price situation was that he had just sent out a memo to uh, his staff of talking about a reorganization and, and places to save money and cuts that could be made. Um, what, what happens with the functioning of uh, a department this big? Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I think, you know, on, as, as of Thursday night, he still was uh, appearing confident that he was going to stay on board. He was on Fox News saying he was looking forward to regaining the, the trust of the president and uh, of, of the people. Uh, it is a very big department. There are uh, a lot of uh, people in place running pieces of it. So uh, I, I, I'm not sure, you know, certainly from the public perspective that we'll notice a whole lot immediately. Uh, Seema Verma, who runs the Center for uh, Medicaid, Medi Medicare and Medicaid Services, who also oversees the marketplaces, is, is still there. She's uh, one of the folks being talked about as a possible successor. So from a policy standpoint, uh, you know, we will probably see a fair amount of continuation. All right. John Wagner, The Washington Post, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.